Joining us this afternoon to talk more about these latest developments, the impeachment trial, Seth Berenswag. He is a managing partner at Berenswag Leonard. He is also the legal expert uh, to whom we turn in complicated issues like this. Seth, it's nice to have you along. Uh, Lisa Murkowski's uh, announcement at about 20 minutes to two really, I think, sealed the fate of this proceeding, didn't it? Yeah, effectively, I think that this is really heading into the final inning. It appears that after these motions complete the formality for the vote, it will probably be a 51-49 vote against witnesses. This is the first time in the history of the Republic that a uh, trial uh, is going to end without any witness and any document, which really brings into a genuine question whether or not this really was a trial to begin with within the meaning of the Constitution. It's also hard to not uh, avoid the mixed messages here mm -hmm. as it relates to witnesses because on the one hand the Republicans were really slamming the House um, uh, Democrats and the, and, the, and the House managers by saying this is all secondhand information you can't get into the head of the president you don't have someone who was in the room and now we have the chance to bring in John Bolton and Mick Mulvaney clearly we know where we're headed as far as that goes. The wild card in all of this is the former national security advisor John Bolton because he's got a book presumably coming out shortly and we learned another chapter if you will from that from the New York Times earlier that uh, uh, implicates one of the uh, one of the house uh, impeachment defenders uh, John Cipollone the White House uh, attorney and that's a whole nother story that we'll get into <laughs> but what we've got here is the prospect of all of this all this sound and fury perhaps signifying nothing right and then Bolton's book comes out, which may have at least uh, one more bombshell in it, and, yeah. and maybe three or four. Well, you know, this is really a unique moment in history because you actually, not only do you have someone who was the head of the National Security Council and the chief of staff who, uh, if they're subpoenaed, ultimately would have to come in, and John Bolton said that he would absolutely come in. Mm -hmm. The guy's got a book coming out in a couple of weeks, as you've correctly noted. So we're going to learn more, and the fact that there hasn't been more leaks has been so somewhat surprising to me, but there's going to be lasting impact, not only with respect to the next couple of months, but for further and, and future administrations. And this, this is going to have a, a big impact across the board. Let's look down the road a little bit. Monday, you have the Iowa caucuses, and that's right. really the first time that uh, people will, in, in this case, uh, stand up, raise their hand, and, and declare for a presidential candidate on the Democratic side. Uh, Tuesday, is the State of the Union address, uh, in, which should be a, a, a very interesting <laughs> uh, uh, confrontation between a president and a lot of those uh, uh, Democrats from the House who they brought the charges. Right. And then everything after that. Uh, we're not exactly out of the thicket here, are we? The pace of this news cycle just continues to accelerate. And, and one of the things that's so volatile about this within the context of the Trump administration is that if and when the vote um, is brought down mm -hmm. to acquit him, then that's going to fundamentally change the balance of power between the, the supposedly co-equal branches of government. Yes. So what happens regardless of party, regardless of who's in the White House next, when they refuse to flatly provide any information to the Congress? Where are we going to go with that? The presidential impact of this is going to have an effect on all of us for years to come. And the interesting thing that we don't know yet and could shortly here is when that vote comes. There's some reporting to indicate that uh, perhaps Mitch McConnell, the uh, Senate Majority Leader, might adjourn the Senate after the uh, closing arguments are made and not pick up this proceeding again until Wednesday. Wednesday would be after the State of the Union address. And so there are, as, as much as we know, there is much more we don't know about this. And, and I guess that's sort of been the hallmark of this, this situation all along. Yeah, as they say, stay tuned, there's <laughs> more. Uh, I, I think that regardless of what happens, and we know what the end result of this is going to be, yes. we're going to look back historically at Alan Dershowitz um, on the floor of the Senate saying things that were absolutely unbelievable. Um, we're going to see a, a vote for the first time in the history of the public for no witnesses in impeachment trial. This is going to have a fundamental effect on the interoperability and the constitutional framework of how the federal government operates in the future. So this is really a time that we're living which is one for the history books. It is indeed and on that note we will uh, have to see what happens next but that's exactly why we asked Seth to join us this afternoon to put some important perspective on all this and we really do appreciate it.